Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm out for a walk in the Hampshire countryside. That pub over there is called the Fisherman's Rest because just over there is the River Meon, one of the best trout rivers in Britain. But that's not what we're here to do in today's video. We're going to have a look and see what's behind this wall. There's something big and spectacular and a bit unexpected. So we go through this gateway here. is the shell of a Tudor mansion. Let's go up and have a closer look. But the building you see today, its name goes by the original building on the site. This is Titchfield Abbey. Now, what you see there is the mansion built on the site of Titchfield Abbey. For a second, don't imagine that, but imagine here, a big monastic church, a pre monstacian Abbey was built here. It was the last abbey of the Premonstatian order and it was built just there where those people are having a picnic. There was an abbey there but as with most abbeys the dissolution of the monasteries came along and unfortunately the abbey was sold off and it was sold to the man. His name is coming on screen now. He was one of Henry VIII's servants. He was he had the abbey and he on the site of part of the abbey and use a lot of the stone to build this Tudor mansion. Now if we go over here, there's an interpretation board I can just see there's a picture of how the abbey would look. So if you, when I was saying imagine the big abbey church, if you weren't quite sure what to imagine, this is what it would look like. So what you see today is down this end of the nave. So that, those windows there, the south transit, that would have been there in front of me and then the nave would have run across there and then you've got the manor house or the big Tudor mansion here that's where that was built so imagine it all down there what we're going to do we're going to go and look around inside so we'll see what we can find of what's 16th century and what's left of the original abbey but if we have a look at this one this is what became the palace house that's what it used to look like So, not too different. This area here has pretty much survived, probably the strongest part of it. What was the cloisters became the courtyard, the great hall was above there. Pretty much all of this, this area is gone and the lodging would have been there on the side of the nave. But the, the gatehouse, that's what survived. Unusually, this abbey had its cloisters to the north of the church. It's not unique. Uh, there are others. Another one I can think of is Dorchester Abbey in Oxfordshire, but generally abbeys usually would have the cloisters as well here to the south of the church. Let's go inside though because this looks really quite exciting and it's just nice to see how well preserved it is even if it is just a shell. Let's go in. I love the big imposing front it has towering above me. Look at these huge wooden doors and there's a little door here. People would have been smaller in those days. So we can go in and we get a great view Looking up, you can see where various floors would have been. Look at the back of those doors, they're even more impressive. So, once upon a time, this would have been the end of the nave of the church. That's looking down, looking east. But then, as I say, this was built on the site. You can see the shell, see the windows, you can see where the floors would have been, various doors. Um, and it looks like there's the two towers at the front. There were possibly rooms or maybe a staircase in those. Let's go through into this room here. And this shows you here what it, how it was transformed. So this was, as I say, once part of the monastery. It then became part of the, the mansion. If you look at those, um, let's just get out of the sun. If you look at those, see the brick Tudor chimneys, they're really quite nicely preserved. So I imagine also with the fireplaces it gives you an idea of where the floors would have been 
we can go into one of the towers, into this one here. So obviously we're on the ground floor. If you look up, to me this confirms it wasn't a staircase because you can tell by the floors they were flat, but you can see little doorways in and out of here. And then interestingly, down this end, it's not quite a full circle, but further up it becomes a full circle. So the, that must be where the roof of the, the building was and the towers continued on up above. In fact, if we go out here, we can probably, yeah, you can see, see that. So, oh yeah, we can even see where, if I go down this end, where the roof would have been. See that up there? Quite clearly see the triangle of where the roof would have been. There's a spiral staircase here. Fortunately, we can't go up it. That'll be great to go up there. So if we went up there, we would at least get up to there, possibly to the very top. That column there, that may well be left over from when this was the end of the nave, because the beginning of the nave would have been about here. But all of these Tudor fireplaces have effectively been built on the site of it. You can see another doorway going out there. Um, and then in those towers, we'll have a look at those in a minute. Let's go out. Uh, there is, there's, I'm fascinated by the look of this little doorway here. There's some stairs going up. I think we should go up and see where it goes. This is warning. They're warm and uneven. I think we can manage that. Oh, just up some stairs up here. And once again, there's another spiral staircase which we can't go up. So we come out here into um, what appears to be a little bit of a cherry orchard. But from here, we get a great view of the abbey behind us and the uh, Tudor chimneys. Oh, that's interesting. I can just see between the two trees, there's a little bit more ruined abbey. I might have to go and uh, have a look at that afterwards. What I thought we'd do, we'll go down here and um, we'll have a look across the cloisters or what was the cloisters, what became the courtyard. And you get another great view of this side of the abbey. Look, so it's almost symmetrical and you've got towers symmetrical in four ways. I think here though, I'm standing in a chimney, look, looking down to the fireplace. And, um, and maybe not that one, but that's, so there's the abbey behind us. And then, oh yeah, look, there's another, another fireplace, a brick fireplace. What I think we'll do though, let's go back around. We'll go back into the, into the big gatehouse. We'll work our way down and we'll go and look around the cloisters and the room's the other side of the gatehouse and go down those little steps again. This is the most exciting part of the Abbey. It's always fun when you go to these old ruins and there's like some stairs you can look around and back into here. So now we're in this, this room here. We're going to go back, in fact, let's go out this door here. We haven't been out this way yet. We'll go out here. So we're, oh, look, there's some tiles. Looks like medieval tiles. Left over from the monastic times. Some more of them here. And then this room here, as you can be using it to store sandbags. Have a look up there. Confirms my earlier theory. Or don't look up, look down and then follow. See that? Looks as though there was like a, quite a grand spiral staircase in here, which would have gone all the way up. And you can see where it would have served other other floors going up the up the tower. So we're now in the cloisters, which later became the courtyard. We get a great view of this side of the abbey. Those chimneys I was in a moment ago, or along there, I was just the other side there. Oh look, there's some more medieval tiles. Oh, it's great to see. Let's get down, it's getting a bit windy, but let's get down and close and look. Look at these, they're really quite spectacular. And now, I'm sat here on the grass. I sit and marvel at the abbey, or the building on the site of the abbey. It's just such a spectacular, really pleasing to look at symmetrical building. Okay, let's um, get up and continue to look around because we've been to that part of the Abbey. We haven't been in that part there. There wasn't a door there. So let's go 
around the side of the cloisters. Oh look, this side here says this was a chapter house. So, um, oh, and now it's possibly a well, but obviously. Yes, yeah, so this was the chapter house. It was bricked up when it came a house. It actually became a private chapel. So chapter house, um, normally they don't actually have religious services as such in there. You would have had more meetings to discuss finances and stuff. But it's quite interesting to see this one actually did become a chapel. You see the stonework on the doorway there. And then, of course, the spectacular alley behind us. The monks who would have lived here, some of them served as local vicars at local churches. So they had quite an important role in the wider community. But they would have obviously lived in lodgings over there somewhere. Now, back in the nave. So, as I said, there's not much to show you of or nothing at all of the original church but you can see how they've marked it out on the grounds. So imagine a really big, spectacular window there. Art of Reese has been stood in a crossing here. So you've got the north transept there. You can see the various other sites of little chapels. That would have been the south transept. And now we're going back into the nave. But of course, they built this house in the way, which um, is kind of quite fascinating, you know, how it evolved. Uh, it's a shame it became a ruin, that, you know, it didn't continue on as a house. That must be the other... The other staircase in the other tower. In yeah, once again we can see some fireplaces. I can see where the roof was. The chimneys have survived really well though. There's another little room here. We've got to go in here. And I think we've pretty much done the whole of the abbey. Yeah, you can look up there again. What we're we gonna do though, we'll go so we're back in the in the nave. We'll go through that little door there. I think I'll have taken you through just about every door there is. We'll go out the front door. I'm going to walk around. I've had a look on the map. I think there's a public footpath that goes where I could see a bit more ruin. So if we went down there, we'll try and find that part of the abbey. Go through here. So here's the cloisters again, which later became the courtyard. Um, did we get, we didn't, oh yeah, it's more tiles, look. We didn't go in, in the other tower, did we? So we should do that. More tiles. Um, and then, you know, look, there's even more tiles. Not as well looked after. It looks like, yeah, once again, this was a staircase going up. And now we'll come out of here. The cloisters. I really do like exploring ruined abbeys. I've made videos from other ruined abbeys in the past. Titchfield Abbey I've never visited before, but I'm really pleased to be here. Even if it is slightly different from the average abbey. go back through because I think this is the best part of the abbey. Oh, look at that, spectacular. And then we can go out here. We're going to go and find that other bit of ruined abbey. As we walk out here, I'm going to leave you with one more view of the spectacular frontage. And then, well, there's a garden centre the other side of the wall. I'm going to walk around there and we'll find that bit of abbey I could see over there. So here we are, I'm just gonna let you have another marvel in front of the abbey. Oh, well, there we are, there's the other little bit of abbey. Um, I can't really go any closer than this. There's a drive that goes down there, it does say private, so I'm not gonna go down there, but the path along here, that is a public footpath. I thought what we'll do, We'll end this video with a little twist because there's something just over there the Abbey lends its name to. I'll go and show you what that is and then that will be conclude our visit to Titchfield Abbey. So the Abbey is just over there. Down here is Titchfield Abbey Junction. This is the Fairham Model Engineering Society's Minutes Railway. So you can see the trains are running down there. This is all covered in a miniature railway Britain video. So um, if you want to see what this railway's like, you have to have a look at the link on screen now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from Titchfield Abbey Junction, goodbye. Another ticket, yellow edged call. Call ticket there. Okay, six eight, yellow edge, six eight.
Next ticket is Blue Edge 300. Blue Edge 300. Next ticket is a yellow edge 296. Yellow edge 296. Lynn K. If you're still here.